Yes, that's right. After so many years of the Quest actually being out, Valve, or Steam, has finally released a wireless PC VR application for the Quest, officially for free in the Quest Store, and people are very, very excited for it. So what is up everyone, I'm Mystical, I hope you're all having a fantastic day, and in today's video we're going to take a look at the brand new Steam Link for Quest devices. It boasts some pretty cool features, like for example, native face tracking on the Quest Pro. So we're going to take a look at that as well. Without any further ado, let's jump in to a bit of information about Steam Link and then I'll show you how to set it up and we'll try it out. Steam Link you may know as the application to wirelessly transmit data to a mobile phone, to a TV even, from a Steam computer. So yes, you will still require a PC VR ready PC for this running Steam. This is just a wireless transmittance software, but it's another alternative to virtual desktop, AirLink and ALVR, meaning you now have a basically native app from Steam. However, possibly because it is brand new, it is still missing some of the features that something like Virtual Desktop boasts. As a matter of fact, the Virtual Desktop developer actually reacted to the news and said, happy to have shown Meta and Valve how it can be done. Because yes, after all, this was the first app to actually do it really well. To quote, Virtual Desktop remains a great solution with more options better image quality, with Snapdragon game super resolution, synchronous space warp, VR pass-through, and plenty of other unique features like the ability to play Rift Store games, not just Steam VR ones. Virtual Desktop also works over the internet to access your Windows or Mac computers from anywhere around the world and streams 180 and 360 videos, and both of those without requiring a VR-ready PC. So as you can see there, Virtual Desktop is still a fantastic option. Us that are using it are actually getting some fantastic fantastic features that Steam VR Link doesn't have yet, and the ability to play our Oculus Store games for those of us that have them. However, what this is is a fantastic option for those jumping into PC VR for the first time that want maybe a free application to test this out with. How well it works? Well, that we're about to try out. So let's jump in to virtual reality on the Quest 3 and the Quest Pro, and let me show you how to get Steam Link downloaded and set up, even though it's a piece of cake. Now, I must say, I was incredibly surprised with how simple and seamless Steam Link was actually to set up. First of all, you launch your Quest store and you search for Steam Link. You download the free application and when you launch it, it'll instantly start searching for PCs on the network that are running Steam. Make sure you have Steam launched on your computer. And once your PC shows up on the Steam Link app in VR, you just select it. Then you pair them both by inputting a code and that's it you're actually ready to be thrown into VR. It is incredibly seamless and seems to just work, which is very surprising because things like this tend to just uh, not do that. From here on out though, you can jump right into your settings as there is quite a few settings to look around inside the new Steam Link software. First of all, there's the new Steam dashboard, which has been out for a while now for some users. But now at the very bottom, you're going to see this little icon right here. This is the Steam Link settings icon. And by going into that, you can change a bunch of settings. Unfortunately, we are quite limited in terms of bandwidth and other things, at least for now. So virtual desktop is still king there. And you can see the visual difference between the two. At least I for sure can. There doesn't seem to be any major dropouts or lag. Again, it just seems to work. Now, I do have a pretty good router and it is in the same room that I am in. I personally have the RAX 70, which is a Netgear Wi-Fi 6 router, which is definitely helping this run smoothly. However, with 350 megabits max for that bitrate, I feel like I'm not getting my full experience here. With the new Steam Link, you also get this very nice Steam network overlay that I only got to run for a little while because, well, after that I had to turn off recording because my PC was trying to set itself on fire. But as you can see in this network graph, you actually get to see your network latency, which is very nice. You wouldn't normally get to see that inside the Steam VR software with something like Virtual Desktop. Of course, Virtual Desktop has its own overlay for that, but I'm just saying, it's a nice little detail. After we were done checking out the settings, the first game I jumped into was Beat Saber, simply because it is a very fast paced game and I wanted to see how Steam Link would do here. And unsurprisingly, it did just fine. 
I had no major dropouts, and I could hit all the blocks as I normally would. Everything else was just related to skill. Once again, I could see the pixelation here. I could see the bitrate issues and the image not being as clear as it would be in virtual desktop. So I for now will be sticking to virtual desktop. And after this, I did jump into another title that isn't available on Quest, The Forest, which is one of my all time favorite titles to play in virtual reality. And once again here, I could see the clarity difference between the two. However, it was running smoothly and there were, once again, no hiccups, which is very, very nice to see. Some people would take the clarity difference over stability. Now, I'm not saying virtual desktop isn't stable, I'm just saying that with how simple this is to set up, I can see a lot of people just taking this and sticking with it. Because for a lot of people, this is going to be more than enough. And I bet you as Steam upgrades their software moving on, especially when they have their own headset out, this is going to become pretty big. Or at least that's the way I'm seeing it. Do let me know your opinions down below. What do you think about the clarity? As this is my recording from Quest, which means that you get to see exactly what I'm seeing. What's nice to see is that there's no black bars when I'm moving my head around really fast. The only lag spikes I got was when I tried recording at the same time as playing, but that's my PC's fault as that thing is basically on fire at this point. But yeah, overall, I am incredibly happy with the way this works. And the fact that it doesn't require any additional software, you just use exactly what you have, is very, very nice. And Valve did a great job making it seamless. Now for the part that a lot of Quest Pro users are excited about, as the new Steam Link software can send off your eye tracking data to OSC servers natively, meaning it's right there inside the application. And you can either use port 9000, which will send it off to VRChat directly, or you can use port 9015, which will send it off to VRCFT. Now, I did try to test this, and when you launch the Steam VR Link application on your Quest Pro, it does ask you for access to tracking expressions, which is great. But then I actually launched VRChat and enabled OSC. And yes, I could see my OSC showing up, and the right eye blinking was working. However, the left one wasn't, and it never asked me to calibrate. That's a problem. I feel like it should ask you to calibrate every single time you want to jump into the application in case something is wrong, and then you can select either yes or no. The other issue I was having is the fact that my avatar isn't face tracking enabled, meaning that no matter what I did, it didn't actually show up on the avatar. Then when I did actually find a face tracking enabled avatar, it still didn't work. So I'm definitely doing something wrong here, as the OSC trackers are showing up in VR chat, but they're just not working on any of the avatars that I tried. So please let me know what I'm doing wrong down below. So there you guys go, another alternative to play wireless PC VR on our Quest. I'm actually surprised it took Valve this long. However, this could possibly potentially mean that they're getting ready to launch something of their own. Even though a lot of people, including myself, are hoping that their next headset is going to be able to run PC VR natively. And I'm still hoping that. But all I'm saying is they now have a native application themselves to stream wireless PC VR. How cool is that? And honestly, I'm really happy for this. It's Valve. It's one of the largest companies. And they do constantly say that they are still working on VR, but the changes they make to the Steam VR software are sometimes not appreciated by everyone. But this, this I feel like should prove that they're not done with VR. And that is something we can be excited for. Let me know which PC VR streaming software you're using down below. And that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day or night, wherever you are in the world. And thank you so, so much for checking this one out. If you liked it, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess it works too. But let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and our Reddit down below, where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. And thank you so, so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys are incredible, amazing, seriously. And much love to anyone else supporting our channel in any way, shape, or form. And of course, as usual, if you guys want to be notified of future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. I've been getting an increasing amount of comments asking me if I'm Polish. As some of you may know, I actually moved to Poland with my friend Eddie, and people are like, why would you do that? Well, that's simply because jestem Polakiem. Całe życie mieszkałem w Irlandii, ale teraz wróciłem jakby do własnego kraju. Mówię po polsku, piszę po polsku. Może trochę dziwnie mówię po polsku, dlatego bo nie, nie potrafię mówić po polsku na filmie, a na filmie się mówi trochę inaczej niż w prawdziwym życiu, ale, ale tak, jestem Polakiem.